little things inside. My but dear girl, there's many a person walking about today in your world who, 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 who outwardly has no uh, merit at all, uh, who outwardly appears as dull as ditch water and as uninteresting as, as whatever you like to say. But inside, there's a wonderful soul. There's a wonderful temperament, there's a wonderful development of character that's been formed over perhaps generations of time, for all you know. The outward show is of no consequence. But what do you look like beautiful. when you come out of your shell? Well, my dear, very beautiful. Do you? Yes. Well, what do you mean by that? Are you, are you the same shape? Or are oh, you I see. Are in you? other words, now you want to know that if you did several generations, in other words, if you've had several um, incarnations over a period, say, of a thousand years, yes. which one do you look like? Yes. That's what well, I'm saying. The point is that you probably don't look like any. Oh, goodness. So don't worry, you'll be recognized. Well, tell me some more. My dear girl, I wish it were possible to find words to explain these things. Don't you realize that we have, at least those of us who develop to a certain degree, have something more important to, uh, to convey than just the outward expression of form. We have the awareness and the ability to see and perceive the soul. And the soul in itself is not just a shape or a face or a figure. That can be assumed, and that often is, especially for recognition purposes when essential. But as you develop spiritually, and become more and more conscious of the powers and the greatness of spirit. You are only concerned with the development of a spirit. You are only conscious, as it were, and only desire to be aware and conscious of the reality, which is the inner soul of the individual. The outer shell or covering is merely the mask. Yeah, I know, but what does the inner soul look like? You know that the snapshot of the... Uh, Chopin, the piano, and himself. My dear girl, if that photograph had yes. picturized a perfect physical reproduction, as you understand it, of Chopin, you would have been in seventh delightful heaven. But the point is that because you've got what you think or appears to be an unformed figure, yes. there's a slight disappointment in a sense. But what I want you to know is that the blazing power of a soul, yes. which only comes to you in that shape as you saw it, unformed, yes. yet in itself, in all its true beauty and all its greatness, is more important and more wonderful than the physical exterior. You saw, to some extent, only dimly, yes. some part of the inner man. I, yes. You see, after all said and done, when you listen to a great piece of music, Yes. You are not conscious of the face or the form. The artist who is executing that music, although you may look at him and see him on the piano, yet within yourself, within your mind, your real inner consciousness is far removed from the artist who is playing the music. It is what the music means to your soul, the way it lifts you out, as it were, from yourself, the way you feel as if you are transported into a uh, heaven of heaven of heaven. That is something which, which is more vital, more important. You are sensing, you are, as it were, touching the very soul of the instrumentalist or the musician. You are receiving a divine, in a sense, contact with him. Mm. I wish it were possible to explain this. You see, you can only appreciate to some extent, I suppose it's natural, while in a material world, you must have form, you must have shape. Yes, I don't that's... say that doesn't exist here, it does. But uh, supposing when I pass over, for instance, now, what will I look at? Why are you so concerned as to what you will look like? You well, look like Rose Crete of 140 Westbourne Terrace, London, West to England, the world. Huh? But only for a time. Oh. And only when necessary. You see, but, my dear girl, uh, then, then uh, spirits have the power to assume uh, different uh, shapes. shapes. Of course. How is that done? By mind. 
Nein, nein. By the power of thought, by the deep inner feelings and emotions and desires and intensity of purpose that comes from deep within. Would you last, sir, just for a little while? When I have thought it strong if enough. If you so wished. Yes. And I don't suppose you do for one moment, but I'm assuming the same that assuming that you so wished that when you came here yes. you were so sick to death of the Rose Street of 140, etc. Yes. London, England, uh, you wanted to look different yes. because you're so browned off, as you say, with that old body of yours. Quite right, yes. Well, you wanted a beautiful glamour. Yes. There's nothing to stop you. But then again, oh. there's nothing to be achieved by it. Of course I not. See. No. After all, what is important is, my dear, you yourself, we don't see you as you see yourself in the mirror. Very seldom, unless, of course, we have a special reason for wanting to see you as you are, in that sense, physically, we see the real most great, the soul, the deep, uh, abiding, sincere person that you are, with all the love and the beauty that is within yourself. You okay. see, over here, we don't, uh, do not concern ourselves with physical shells or bodies. They are materially meant for the time or for yes. purpose. You will have the exterior of Rose Creek when you first come here, of course, for recognition. Uh, but then again, you won't be the Rose Creek uh, of 65 or whatever your age is. You'll be the Rose Creek of 22 or something like that. Straight away? Of course you will. Uh -huh. I mean, not necessarily in some cases would that be so, because if the person passed with a very strong fixed idea of themselves as they were when they were passing or when they passed, and they were conscious of all the aches and pains if they had them and uh, so on, they would hold on for a short space of time to that thought form of themselves. Mm -hmm. But you, to the knowledge that you gained, the experience that you have, it's most unlikely that you'll bring that old body over here at all. You, you won't think of yourself in that sense or that way, I hope not. I hope not. I cannot see oneself there. Of course you can. You can? You want to. Ah. You don't have to have a mirror either. You don't? Then how do you see yourself? The reflection of the astral atmosphere. It's as simple as that. The same as we can see all that has passed in our own lives or the lives of those around and about us. Uh, so we can turn the clock back centuries and centuries upon centuries of time and see what has gone with it before. So we can see in the atmosphere, not only ourselves at all. Nothing does is it, hidden. Does that happen uh, when we come out of our bodies, for instance, that uh, our whole lives are uh, put in front of us? Yes. But you know, I don't know if you've ever heard, it has been said, yes. that a person in the moment of driving can oh, have yes. pass through their lives. You see, what you must remember, my child, is yes. that your particular life, or my particular life, or any soul's particular life, is recorded around and about them in their own environment. And when I use the term environment, I don't necessarily mean the habitation in which they live, but in their own oil emanation, in their own cells. You know the Bible has things written in a very strange way, probably written in a simple way for simple minds at the time, but you know it has been said that everything is recorded and the book of life should be opened as well and you should be judged. Yes. But the point is that no one judges you. You judge yourself. Yes. And you are, for the first time, completely open, as it were, to all us and sundry. Yes. That's why you cannot vibrate, you cannot inherit or enter a condition to which you are not suited. Okay. You must automatically enter into a condition where you are part who will be part of the condition itself. I expect one goes through a certain time for sleep, don't you? Uh, well, you know it depends. You see, we mustn't um, put them all, lump all these things together. I mean, some would find it essential and necessary to rest or relax or to sleep for a space of time uh, and gradually become, as it were, uh, brought into the new environment gradually. There are others. It isn't necessary. Oh. I don't think there's going to be much sleep with you. I think you're going to be so cute, so wide awake, so running here, there, and everywhere. Tell me this. Tell me this. 